First things first, this game kept crashing on me. But it looks like the error has to do with Unreal 4 and DX12 rather than the game. The fix was supposedly to add dash DX11 and the launch options, but that didn't work. Turns out it had to do with my graphics card being overclocked, but I never overclocked it. It came overclocked from the factory. I had to manually declock it. Anyway, Everspace is a space shooter roguelite with emphasis on scavenging and keeping your rust bucket together. The gameplay loop is arriving in a zone, sniffing around locations and killing enemies to hoover up resources to keep your ship in shape and fuel to safely get to the next area. But you don't have forever to look. Soon enough, a few boys will show up to get you off their space lawn. There's always a feeling of, ooh, what's over there? Combat can get messy, so you need to make sure you only take on what you're able to fight. Sometimes, running away is a necessity. Perhaps pulling a group towards a neutral party to try and tip the scales. Sometimes, the time for you to leave is right after you get there. You're a plucky rogue, and you need to use your wits to prosper here. The controls took a lot of getting used to. I don't usually play fly games like this, especially not on PC. I think the last one I did was Ace Combat on the 3DS. Which was sick, by the way. That was proto VR there. The default scheme has your mouse unlocked, sliding around the screen like you're playing a Wii shooter. There's an option to lock it to the center of the screen, but I found out quickly what a limitation that became. You can play with a controller, but you better like the default control scheme, where the left shoulder buttons are forward and back, and up and down on the stick make you go up and down, because you can't switch those. No matter what control scheme you use, you do get a little bit of bullet magnetism tracking, so you don't have to be neurotic about your aiming. I also like that menus can be easily navigated with the same keys you move with. This is an ace combat. It's not really dogfighting since everyone can turn on a dime. It's more like an underwater shooter. Fights are all about staying calm under pressure and keeping control. Some weapons are better against shields and some against armor, so you need to wear down with one and switch with another for the kill. But there are balanced weapons if you don't want to bother with that. Enemies are tough, so you gotta know when to book it. Making a quick getaway involves hiding behind cover while lining up your warp jump. Even running away is a skill you have to develop. Except, throw all of what I just said out the window, because if you strafe in a square pattern, nothing can hit you. It's actually pretty ridiculous just how much of the game is countered by going in a circle. The fights with some alien ships are cool because they're shielded from the front and you have to get behind them. It's some of the only instance of true dogfighting there is in this game. There are fights with big ships that block your way forward with a warp jammer, so you have to fight them. And it's just minutes of going in a square, whittling down its giant health pool and it spawns drones constantly that heal itself. It sucks. It's best to cheese them out by saving a big damage dealer or cloaking right up to the jammer to hack it, which is cool that you can do that. I also really hate the Webbers. If they get close, they freeze you in place, which is a death sentence. But not only that, they put so much shit on your screen that you can't even tell where they are. As you progress through the run, you find gear like guns, devices with abilities, and consumable items through scavenging and taking them out of the extra cold dead hands of those unfortunate to be in your path. Fine by me, that's how I usually get my things. <laughs> Ah, 
I lost that fight. There's a crafting system here, but I don't like crafting, so I didn't use it. Then there's the between runs upgrading. I'm a little over roguelikes. As you're first playing the game, you go on and then you hit an insurmountable wall because you didn't grind enough. Keep playing the same levels over and over until you match a gear check. This added tens of hours to my total playtime, but I didn't feel like I was getting much out of it. Like empty calories, they were, they were empty hours. And I like RPGs, but the difference in an RPG is you level a gear to match the new zones and enemies you fight. In a roguelike, you have to keep going through the same steps that you already did to get back to where you were. There's this air around the genre that the game's, oh, they're really hard. Oh my God, they're so hard. But they're just artificially hard. Think about what difference there would be if there wasn't this meta progression between runs and you were just at a baseline level of power. The onus would be more on your skills and knowledge to progress, and luck. I actually like a little bit of randomness. Keeps things spicy, but there is one thing I want control over, and that's the weapons I use. It's how you play the game. But sometimes in roguelikes you want a certain weapon and it just doesn't hand it over. Give it to me. I don't want this. I want this! No! Oh, just adapt your playstyle or craft. Any run can be a winning run. Look. I don't... wanna... <laughs> also, it feels pretty wrong to have a run end just because the game didn't drop the good stuff. I had a run where I maxed out on healing items. The next run, it felt like I got none guess I took them all. I suppose I should look at the total playtime as one large game instead of playing the same game over and over with limits incrementally being taken away, but I don't know, something feels like it's missing. That was a wild tangent, wasn't it? Ah oh, well. Everspace isn't the representative of all roguelikes, so I'm not going to be so hard on it. Art Direction it's all big expanses of space with lots of rocks and lots of wrecks. Forever. Each frame is gorgeous, but it's going to be the only thing you see. They're doing their best to add variety. The color of light will change. Planets within kissing distance make backdrops for battles. Vast galaxies are uncomfortably far away and stage hazards add spice both aesthetically and mechanically, but it, it's still rocks and wrecks. It really adds to the feeling that you're doing the same thing over and over again. Maybe I'm just not a space kind of guy. I'm sure I've put up with way worse stuff when it's fantasy flavored. I do really love the scale of things. I like big expanses with big things in them, making me feel like a small part of this big, big world. You ever play or watch like a, a scale of the universe thing, and as it zooms further out you get more scared, not knowing what unfathomably huge thing could possibly come next to show you how small you really are? It's like that. Hats off to the art team. The designs aren't too impressive. The ships you fly are pretty cute. And I can see that there's some efforts being put into the enemy ships to try and make them look distinct from each other. But the thing is, they're so far away that they need to be even more outlandish just to stand out from each other. Have you ever heard of how, like, on a play or musical, the makeup of the actors is super exaggerated so that people far away can see what kind of emotions they're trying to portray. It's like that. The effects, I feel, have a little bit of character to them to try and help them stand out in the sci-fi genre. Just a little. The sight of enemy ships wrecking is very nice. In that satisfying way, more chunks explode out from the initial explosion when they do bite the dust. 
close combat is quite the spectacle. The UI is trying very hard to be minimal. It can be hard to get information from a glance. For example, arrows around the screen are needed when you can get flipped and spun around all over the place in space. The warp gate's obvious, but what about these other ones? I had to sit there and figure out, oh, the full blue circle means loot from defeated enemies, the hollow blue circle means gathering nodes, and the gray circle means things I can't hold any more of. Damn it, minimalism, stop playing hard to get and just tell me what you want. Small aside, but from how the UI looked, I thought you could only choose from an absurdly small choice of colors for your ship. I thought, of all the representatives of the visible spectrum, Puke Yellow was able to muscle its way into one of the five spots. Silly me jumping to conclusion. Music. seems to be partly inspired by Firefly. There's this getting it done vibe to it when you're scavenging. Still ended up going to my own music though. The sounds themselves are decent enough, but they're used really well to convey info to the player. Dings when you're done mining a resource. Clicks when an enemy notices you. Also, I, uh, I really like that the AI character tells me I'm doing a good job when I do something cool. Good shot! Really gets the serotonin flowing. The story does a little more than it needs to, which I appreciate. You play as a series of clones of a clone scientist, and it's not terribly interesting otherwise. The main character isn't too likable to me, very generic. Okay, thanks for the introduction. Now you want me to use this? It is the... And he's got awkward banter. I would have preferred a silent protagonist with the AI talking a lot more unprompted. Or something different done with the character. Maybe since he's a scientist, give him a love of discovery. Or he talks confidently about matters of science. The game specifically mentions that the clones shouldn't have the memories of the original, but then goes on to say that these clones have some memories of the original. I like the antagonist, though. As soon as he realizes you're a clone, he immediately considers you worthless to him, instead of harassing you with questions he knows you can't answer. I knew it. You're a clone. I'm talking to a meatbag. Oh, Adam, what have you done? I'll let you go for now. Try not... And he has some fun line delivery to boot. I wish I saw more of him. Now, I have to admit something. I didn't finish the game's story. I beat the gamut at the end, but after that I really felt like I had gotten everything I could out of the game. So, the cell is... Roguish space gallivanting. Gorgeous scenery. Skillful devs. But on the other hand, You've got story and characters that try, but don't go too far, and it's very repetitive. And it's very repetitive. Oh!